Hey everybody, I'm exhausted. I'm just going to come out and say it. Um, I have not been sleeping fantastic. Anyway, so today's June 1st. <clears throat> and today is the first day of our um, cons Conspiracy Grotesco um, read along. And, um, today we are starting with, um, oops. We're starting with, um, the first story in Teatro Grotesco, which is called Purity, which might be one of my favorite short stories of all time. It is just fantastic. Let's see. So it's like 18 pages, roughly. Now, if you are doing the read-along, um, I haven't really been on Discord the last week. I've been so busy, slammed. <clears throat> but I'm going to be getting on there today to talk a little bit about all the stuff that's going on. And um, so we're starting with Purity. If you haven't read the story Purity by Thomas Ligotti yet, stop this video because there will be spoilers because I will be discussing topics on this. Um, and again, I'm really looking forward to conversation on Discord um, or in the comments here. So, um, to talk about Purity... The story, um, if you remember, I probably about two months ago, three months ago, I did a vague video on this story, um, but now we're, we're digging deep. So the story is about um, a family, um, a mom and dad, uh, older sister, and a younger brother. The story is told from the point of view of Daniel, who is the younger brother. And um, they just moved into a new house. Let's see here. We were living in a rented house, neither the first nor the last of the long succession of such places that the family inhabited throughout my childhood years. Um, it was shortly after we had moved into this particular house that my father preached to us his philosophy of rented living. Now, before I go any further, I just want to say that this story is like a merger of modern philosophy and uh, like American Gothic, like, um, there's a lot of how this is written that feels like it's a old um, gothic romance, you know. Um, not so much the romantical part, but the romantical part in the sense of the words used to describe the decay of the settings. Um, and it's done beautifully but there is so much philosophy there is so much of what Ligotti thinks and how Ligotti sees the world in here that this story and um, reading the conspiracy of the human race or the conspiracy against the human race when reading these together I think um you get such a stronger um, pull in your soul about the things that are being talked about. So going back to <clears throat> going back to the father's um, uh, philosophy for rented living. Okay, it's uh, like everything that there is, is rented. You really don't own anything. 
you don't own your possessions, you don't own um, the house or apartment that you're in. Even ideas are recycled. The ideas that float in your head are rented. Um, every single thing is rented. And, it, I mean, he doesn't go about this, but, like, food. Like, you don't buy it, you only rent it. If you know what I'm saying. Um, and he talks about um, intellectual cuties. So, the dad... Um, Everyone in this family is nuts, we'll just say. But the dad is kind of like <clears throat> like a mad scientist, okay? He's like, he goes in the basement and conducts these experiments. And um, the mom and the daughter, they go on their uh, sabbaticals where they just leave for a while. And when they come back, they usually have money. And because of the dad's experiments, they're always having to, like, move constantly. Um, so, the Daniel talks about the house being haunted, as most of the houses are that they move into. And that they are in a super bad neighborhood, but an even worse neighborhood is right next door. And um, he likes like wandering through the even worse neighborhood because of the structures and like the moon even looks different um, when you get into that part of town and stuff. Um, now this one day, um, someone's at the door. They go down to check who it is and it's this like, like missionary basically from a group called um, Citizens of faith or citizens in faith or citizens for faith or whatever. And he wants a donation. And the dad's like, look, dude, like, I don't mind giving you a donation if, like, you come in and let us try to, like, talk about this and see what's going on, you know? Because um, he's, like, making fun of the name of the organization and everything. And, um... This is where we kind of learn the dad's, uh, like, the big thing he's trying to figure out, the thing he's trying to discover, the thing he's trying to, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for here, but basically, the dad thinks that minds are impure with these um, intellectual cuties and these rented ideas. And there's three things that one most must overcome in order to be pure. And as he's talking to this guy, he brings up um, nations and God. Those are two of the three things that um, need to be kind of stomped out in order for there to be purity in the world. And so as they're talking, the dad's like, well, I'll tell you what, here's this big wad of money. If you let me um, try some stuff out down in the basement with you, I'll give you this big wad of money. And um, I don't know, the dude decides that there's absolutely nothing terrifying about this situation and he goes down with them. Um, so while all this is going on, Daniel goes over to Candy's and Candy is this older black woman that lives in like a bombed out, burnout, um, dilapidated house that has no power, no heat, no nothing. Um, there's a couch and what Daniel perceives to be a battery operated television. And um, they become friends, and he goes over there all the time and just hangs out with her. And um, he wants to use the bathroom, and when he goes to the bathroom, it's just like this closet with a hole in the floor that goes down to the basement where there's all this, like, <sighs> piss and shit and broken glass and all sorts of other shit. And this is fascinating to Daniel. 
Then Daniel hears that there is a child murderer running around, and that um, Candy's son was um, most likely one of the victims of the child murderer. And it just kind of gloss over it. No big deal. Well, then we start going back to, like, the house being haunted. And this is probably where I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever read. And it's not that it's, like, super profound or anything like that, but just the way it was, it just, um, it really shook me. But it's like, Daniel's afraid of the attic because he sees something in the attic and the attic's haunted. The dad gets all pissed off at him and the dad's like, um, the attic is not haunting your head. Your head is haunting the attic. There's nothing wrong with the attic. This is you. Now, if you let me take you down into the basement, I could try something. And if it works, you won't be afraid of the attic anymore. And he's like, all right, whatever, you know, dad, I trust you. So dad sucks this liquid, um, this green liquid out of Daniel's brain and um, puts it in a jar. And Daniel is no longer afraid of the attic. But when the dad gives Daniel this jar, when Daniel holds the jar, the fear comes back. Okay? So, um, Daniel wants to show Candy, like, this awesome jar of brain juice that makes you scared of shit. So he's going to take that over to Candy's. And the dad's like, wait, there's a child murderer. Um, why don't you take this? And the dad gives him a, like, a fountain pen that is not really a fountain pen. And so Daniel's like, all right, whatevs. And so Daniel goes over to Candy's, hands her the jar, and she's like, oh my gosh, I knew it, I knew it. And um, then there are, because there's these other people who hang out in the shadows over at Candy's place. And they're like, hey, the cops are here or whatever. And so this cop, I don't know why, but I picture fucking um, Gary Busey every fucking time. It's so weird. The cop comes in and he's like, hey, I'm here for the little white kid. I know he's here. I just want to take him home. And no one said anything and Daniel was hiding. And so Daniel comes out and I won't say everything that happens because I, I, even if you haven't read it, there's still some cool shit if I don't tell everything. So basically Daniel runs up to him and stabs him with this pen. And he just drops dead. And um, some other shit happens. And um, it comes up a little bit later. But if you haven't read it, you go read that bit. The bit that I really want to talk about here is when Daniel gets back home. The dad's on the couch crying. The mom's sitting with him. The door to the basement is open. Daniel wants to see what's going on. He goes down. All of his dad's equipment is trash, like been destroyed. All of his notes are strewn all over the place. It's just like a fucking disaster zone. And there's just like ankle deep green ooze everywhere. And in the far corner of the room, he could see the missionary dude. And he's sitting in the chair, all like tied into the chair with like a tube coming out of him into this overflowing bucket of green shit. And um, Daniel doesn't know if he's alive or dead. So he goes upstairs um, after getting into a weird um, pseudo argument with his sister. Um, and says like, dad, like, when you were talking to that guy, you told him about two of the three things. What's the third thing? The third thing we need to free ourselves from. And the mom looks at him and she's like, oh, it's family, sweetheart. And that's how the story ends. Now, um, a couple things. The story alludes to the fact that 
the mom and the sister may have met up with the cop before the cop went looking for Daniel. And the way things were said, it was almost as if the mom kind of sold Daniel to this cop. Okay? All of this is alluded to. It's not said. But the dad's freaking out. He's laying on the couch screaming like, everything's impure. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And um, there have been people who've said different things about what this means at the end of this. And what I think it means is that the dad was just sucking all this shit out of this guy's head to make him basically renounce nation, God, and family. And maybe he renounced family, maybe he renounced nation, but I don't know if he was able to get him to renounce God. And the fact that all of this horrible green goo was all over the place and probably got all over the dad. And that's the same stuff that made Daniel like not be afraid of the attic anymore, but when he held it, he was afraid. It might have made the dad kind of go crazy that he just kept sucking all the shit out of this guy's head and he couldn't get this guy to like renounce these things, you know? And then he was just standing in the pool of this guy's like fear and it probably just pushed him over the edge. That's my take on it. Um, I've heard some other takes on it that to me don't make any sense at all, but, um, that's my take. And the reason why this is such a big thing is because I've been reading a lot of, um, like, Camus, Schopenhauer, and um, Nietzsche. And um, something that comes up in those, um, in what I've been going through, um, is the same thing, like nationalism, religion, and family. And how these things um, are set into place to make not make you docile, but just make you obey, um, I guess is the best way to put it. And in order to have true happiness, um, having these things uh, won't really help you, I guess. And if you do that whole like um, Nietzsche superhuman deal with like the the camel and the lion and the baby or the child. Um, the people who follow these three, like nation, God, and family, like they're the camels, you know what I'm saying? And um, there's just so many things interconnected. And now tomorrow um, we're going to be reading the introduction in the first chapter of the conspiracy against the human race. So if you haven't read this, the introduction in the first chapter of this, read this tonight and um, I'll have a video about this up tomorrow. And a lot of the topics that are brought up in purity and in other stories in this book are going to be like almost like key points in the conspiracy against the human race. So this is just so much fun. Like, like, I don't know if you guys are digging this, but this is like, I don't know, fat kid in a candy store. Look out, you know? So, um, hopefully, um, you guys are enjoying this. Um, join the discussion on discord. Let me know down below what you think. Um, I would love to hear what your theories on this are. Um, what, like just any theories that you have on it. So, um, Oh, no. Uh, Saturday, I'm doing a poetry reading live on YouTube right here. Um, I don't know if you just check the community tab or if it comes up in your feed, but um, I'll post it again today um, to give you a thing so you could uh, hit a reminder for it when it goes live. Um, it's this Saturday at, um, I believe, 6 um, Pacific. 
So, 9 Eastern um, and later on, for the farther east you go. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it, and we will talk to you later. Uh, and... Uh